everybody. Welcome to Carbonite Bounty BS, the show where we discuss the uh, Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian. I am Scott, and I'm joined today by my fair accomplices in this crime of audio, uh, Sam and, and video and video. Now that's right. We can't uh, discriminate. It is a video also. So how is everybody doing today? Good. Ready. You ready, Ken? Ready. All right. Well, let's talk first impressions because, you know, this is the this is the premiere. It's chapter one. It's the very first episode. It's time to get excited. We've been waiting for a show like this for a long time. I know I have. We've been talking off mic a little bit. Uh, I, I think all of us are in agreement that it, this uh, it kicks. It's pretty <laughs> it's pretty good. So I know we're excited to get started on uh, on uh, where everything's going to go um, before. Before we do get started, though, I did want to uh, we don't want to take a moment to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so, Sam. Where mm -hmm. can our fair viewers find us? Make sure you guys are going to our website, nerdcyclopedia.com. That's where you can get our overall, you know, links and everything, you know, as related to Nerdcyclopedia content, Mandalorian, Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, Nerdcyclopedia, Nerd Denim, everything. Make sure that you follow us on Twitter at Nerdcyclopedia and also Instagram and Facebook. Make sure that you are leaving us messages at yes. nerds yes. <laughs> at nerdcyclopedia.com. We're basically nerds. all over the place. And make sure that you're subscribing. Make sure that you click the subscribe button right now. Now click it right Do now. It before you hear something you don't want to hear. <laughs> exactly. That is a threat. And make sure <laughs> that you also subscribe to our podcast. We're all over the podcast nation. Yeah. You know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, basically anywhere that you hear your um listen to your favorite podcast, we're there. That's right. We made sure we're there, so you can't get rid of us now. It's been too long. Uh I've been far too long. So, um, Ken, let me ask you this. I know that uh, you know my relationship with the source material is real strong. I know you and our preview cast said that you've been a fan since you were super super little little. Uh, let me ask you, how much? How like a Yoda? Yeah, like a little Yoda, just since you were fifty. Uh, how how much? Uh, how excited are you to see this this sort of deepening of this particular piece of the lore? Um, ever since I heard about this coming out, I, I've been anticipating this. Uh, the The Mandalorians. Bounty Hunter General uh, have been an obsession of mine. Mm -hmm. So Boba Fett has been a, sort of a key um, mental uh, and, and physical collecting uh, sort of target okay. for, for right. me. Uh, and uh, I've always been fascinated with, with the char character. He's just, he's just a badass. He's a badass. He's got the fewest lines of any character in any movie franchise. And he's character in any movie franchise in yeah, the entire yeah, like Star Wars universe, right? Yeah, if that. I mean, and they're all very. He's worth a lot to me. Dead. Yeah. I mean, he's he's great. He's <laughs> it's, great. It's such a small <laughs> so, amount of lines, you wouldn't even notice that. You know, you wouldn't even have any way to notice that he's his accent changes in the re-releases. You know, that's a that's a small amount of lines, uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, now, yeah. Sam, I know, I know. So oh, when yeah, they were sorry, doing, Sam, I didn't that. know you were. I didn't know there was more. My bad. No, no, no. I was just going to say, so when I heard about this, this was going to be a specific story centered around uh, the Mandalorian uh, race. I was I was just anticipating this uh, real, real big, awesome, real big. Awesome. You know, and I think that what's great is that, you know, we've really been rewarded for that sort of fidelity because I feel like they spent, what, $200 million on this season of television. And I think that every single dollar that's on the screen. And that is, that is oh, something, yeah. something that's awesome. A lot of dollars. Something that's awesome. Uh, I feel like they're really doing things right here, Sam. You know, what would you say was the best? What was your favorite, like, highlight of the of the show for you so far? Um, Well, the highlight of the show is the Mandalorian's mm -hmm. whole look. I mean, I just love his mask down to his, like, his whole outfit. I mean, his look is just so cool. You know, um, even when he, you know, first premiered in like the, you know, the, um, 
the Star Wars holiday special back mm-hmm. then and everything. You know, he had to develop. They, 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 Boba Fett had the, the, you know, the, um, the look there. And I think that's where the legend of, you know, Boba Fett just grew. And to see it just manifested out right here in the actual show, we're getting like mm-hmm. a whole um, good uh, 45 to 60 minutes full of, a, you know, a Mandalorian, you know, the race and everything. It's it's just awesome to see. I, so it's it's not so much of a specific scene, but I just like looking at him. He, the look the look is very classic. And that's something that, you know, has been pretty consistent since Boba Fett. Is that just he's a badass and he looks uh, like a badass? I don't know. That's how that's how you'd explain it to like someone who'd never Super seen cool. it. Super cool, yeah. Super cool. So look. so let's jump into the episode because you know, I'm, and I'm just gonna say I'm gonna say a few things myself. So hold on, I got control of this. I'm uh, you know behind the curtain. I'm the one running the, the video. All right. So my, all right. my wife said uh, her favorite part of this is that it's uh, she said she's down for westerns and she's down for baby Yodas. So she said she loves it. Uh, her favorite part, because you know she's she's just like you, Sam. She didn't come to Star Wars until I took her there, uh, pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, so she's always liked uh, she likes the cantina scenes, the bar scenes, right? She likes that part of Star Wars. So for her, this is just like phew, awesome. So she's super yeah, super excited out. about yeah. it too. Um, so let's jump in a little bit into the recap. Okay, so let's let's talk about okay. the show a little bit as we go, uh, kind of go through. Uh, I got a lot of specific things to say. I'm sure you guys do. Uh, you know, uh, so let's jump. Let's dive on in. So we kind of okay. we kind of start on like an icy icy style <coughs> planet. I don't think it's not as cold as hot, but it's pretty cold. And we've got some bullies harassing like a bluish monster from the Blue Lagoon looking guy, saying they're going to sell his glands for money. That seems pretty tough. Uh, the Mandalorian comes in, and all of a sudden, all these tough guys want to pick a fight with him. Not a great idea. From what I heard, okay. uh, it doesn't really kick off until, you know, uh, until they kind of like say something about the Beskar steel, right? Is that really Beskar? And they kind of flint him. And then from that point on, like, it's all no holds barred. Um, you know, I really, really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed that they kind of just got right to it, right? Uh, we find that the bounty is actually the, the guy that was getting bullied, which is a fun inversion of that. And, um, the Mandalorian warns, I can bring you in warm or I can bring you in cold, right? That's what he says. So tell what? me, tell me, Ken, do you know anything about Beskar Steel? Do you know what they're talking about there? It's the, it's the armor, or it's the material that they are, that they make their armor out of. Okay. So it's a very, as I understand it, so it's part of their rite of passage. They okay. build their armor. Awesome. Okay. This, steel that the big the big thing is the empire stole it all okay they they took it all from them the great purge now right the purge exactly they took all this beskar steel from the mandalorian so now it's a they're 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 you know their dream is to get it back now that the empire has collapsed which is talked about unfortunate for the economic stability of the galaxy apparently uh Sam, what did you think of the action uh, here? What did you think of this uh, this con- this confrontation? What what did you like about about how they handled you know this opening business? Well, I mean, one thing I want to say right off the bat, I mean, how do you guys? What do you guys think about when you when when they first appear? Because it's like a um sort of like a shot coming um you know above oh you know below mm-hmm. you know with the Mandalorian and his capes just flowing in like the um you know in the wind and everything. You see the product. You you talking about you see the production value. You know the dollars right on the screen. Mm-hmm. Man, as soon as you as soon as this opening scene, as soon as this scene opens, it's like you're in a movie. Yeah. You know you're you're you're, you're right there, and it's not like you know you're you're actually uh, watching a regular TV show. They actually bring you into you know a movie, and we heard Disney was going to um you know put their their money where their mouth is with you know with this service and everything. So I was very appreciative to see. You know how the production value just in this opening scene and everything, and then this conversation just happens, and it's 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 like I'm watching um like a Star Wars movie. It's 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 you know to me, mm. ways. Oops, sorry. And me to some ways, it's like a it's just a western. I mean, from from the beginning, mm-hmm. opening, establishing shot, mm-hmm. this is the man with no name. This is Clint Eastwood, and he is coming to your town, and it is a bad idea to make it difficult for him to come to your town. Uh, bottom line, he's he's ruthless. He's tough. He could he can he put it the money where his mouth is. 
right. also, which is something that, you know, is important. And I, I just got to say, I appreciate them uh, cutting that guy in half with the door, which is something I figure happens all the time. And, you know, when you got doors <laughs> like that. No, it's just... Yeah, the squid head. The squid head pulled yeah. him through and, <laughs> and <laughs> just it. Pretty, yeah, well. pretty ruthless stuff, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I really like that a lot. I thought it established a character as someone who doesn't talk very much, says the important stuff. Um, you know, this whole sequence is great here with the monster from the Blue Lagoon. I feel like the fact that, you know, we talk a lot about what I think about uh, episode one. Um, we talk a lot about episode one here and how I think that dropping Jar Jar Binks ASAP would have made the movie actually pretty good. <laughs> pretty pretty good so dropping this guy off here at the end of the sequence is good too so they was nice action in this sequence i mean you know the um you know the choreography and everything and mm -hmm. like i said i mean man uh, man and laurie is such a cool looking character jeez he's just a, <laughs> he was like, what did boba fett's you know and ken ken would remember this i wouldn't remember this but all boba fett was like the most popular action figure when it came out no one even knew what he did in the movie right that's kind of boba fett's always sort of been that guy yeah, he just he everyone liked the way he looked, and yeah. he enjoys what he does. Yeah, he's a little like, bummed out about noticing. He likes right? not only the money but the hunt. That's awesome, and you know the Mandalorians, like like you said, the Mandalorian race is famous for this. So we'll find that out that out a little bit later. So I want to talk for a second here about this next scene, booking passage to the yards or, or the, the the spaceport or whatever, and uh, you know. The Mandalorian is willing to pay a little extra to not have to deal with a droid, which makes a lot of sense, seeing as how all those Mandalorian clones yeah. had to tangle with all those droids back in the day. Uh, they were probably mixed like oil and water, you know what I mean? Uh, so he pays a little extra to get, um, instead of a real nice speeder, a real crappy speeder driven by comedian Brian Posehn, which is uh, awesome to see a little bit of stunt casting there. You guys, Did you guys uh. recognize Brian Posehn? Did you know who he was? No. Mm -mm. No? So, no, I didn't recognize him. Yeah, so he's in like uh, some Sarah, shows with Sarah Silverman and um, like sitcoms and stuff. But he was a little bit of a stunt cast. So I just want to point out that I recognized him, and they didn't drive that reference into the ground either. They pretty much were like, yep, he's just a guy. He's he's going to be in this for a little bit. That's it. That's a whole deal. Uh, so I appreciated them doing the stunt casting right there. Yeah, he's there and he's gone. <laughs> yeah, because he drops him off. He says, stay off the ice. I'd stay off the ice if I were you. He gets eaten immediately. Like, I mean, there is no mm -hmm. delay uh, between getting eaten and not getting eaten. And uh, <clears throat> the Yeah, what, what, did you guys, what did you guys think about the effects of that? You know, of the, um, man, I was like, man, I mean, that's, that's like really awesome. You know? Everything looked, everything looked like a Star Wars movie. It doesn't, it doesn't look like a cheap knockoff version of a Star Wars movie, right? It's, did uh, yeah, did Rogue One have the... Disney, um, Disney. The transitions, right. yeah, they did. They did. Did Rogue Run have the same transitions? Like, is that that basically is a Star Wars thing as far as like the yeah, wipes, wipes and the okay? Yeah, wipes have always been a Star Wars the thing. wipes the uh, the outside the center mm -hmm. you know, right. wipes with the ship flowing through. Yeah, they, that that's all vintage. That's okay. all old school. Absolutely. Okay, and it was yeah. and that was in Rogue One too, right? You know the way they they they, they yep. did in that movie as well. Okay, yeah, it's a stylistic thing. It was in the special features on the. Uh, VHS to give you an idea of how uh, <laughs> I don't know I'm making that up I probably probably wasn't any special features on that thing. <laughs> okay so so the monster comes and bites the Mandalorian ship and the Mandalorian uses some sort of stun spear to sort of zap him away you know I, I got the feeling that this was a hundred percent like like press X to use the stun spear you know what I mean like it was <laughs> This felt like let's show yeah, all it was the very, it was very video game ish as far as the you know the way it went down and stuff. Yeah. You know, press press the um button you know um you know really hard in order to get the monster off of you. Yeah. <laughs> and then the X pops up, and if you don't do it, it's like you know, you have to do this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know what you mean. So, uh, pretty nifty there. And uh, this this scene in the ship. What what did you guys think of the scene in the ship with Gilface here, uh, trying to talk his way into the Mandalorian's good graces? Do you think he's gonna have a lot of luck doing that? No, 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 no. But we got a nice. And I think he let him go. He let him go down the bathroom intentionally so he could see where he was going to go. Yeah, and he was going to be just frozen in carbonite, and that was it. He lit. He did that on purpose. I agree. Get this guy out of here. There's no way he didn't have a camera down there, right? No. I mean, I would expect yeah. if I was in someone's cargo hold today, I'd expect they had a camera on me. <laughs> well, in the future. Especially you. Especially me. Now, listen, I'm rambunctious. You got to keep an eye on me. Don't let me get away, or else you'll never get the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that I guard. 
<laughs> it's all part of the game. There is a part of gold. Don't ask me about it. So, all right. So he puts he puts the gill man on ice. So he he freezes him in carbonite, and he's a bounty. So I'm feeling pretty good. Number one about picking the title of this show. Yeah. I felt awesome. I was like when they were stacking up the carbonite, I was like, oh boy, yeah. That's the right. That was the right thing to do. <laughs> uh, so the Mando saunters into a cantina and meets up with Carl Weathers, who's got himself a stew going, and cashes in his transponders for a little bit of credits. We find that Imperial credits are no good. Nice seeing Carl uh, uh, Apollo that? Creed in 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 the house here. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, Apollo Creed, right? He's gonna knock out the fiscal issues caused by the collapse of the government <laughs> and some bounties. Okay, so, so, uh, so he pays him in Lon Calamari coin and gives him one job, which is a big deal. There's no chain code, which is like an ID code, and it's just one job. It's the best job they got, and he's the best bounty hunter. Um, what would you think of this scene here? You know, we find out some information about what's happened. Ken, what do you make of what's happened to the, uh, the place that was the Empire since uh, the events on the, the Century Moon? Right, and I... I think what what I I feel here is okay. So we all knew the empire collapsed. Yeah. So now everyone's trying to get back to normal. So everyone's back to trying to find the you know their place in the in the galaxy or in their life because they have been living under the imperial tyranny for so long. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of bounty hunters and just criminal activity now even more. Or so, because people are getting back and they got their freedoms back, so they're you know they're just acting they're 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 loosey goosey, they're just going crazy. <laughs> loosey goosey with the rules, right? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, we're being a little loose with the rules now because the empire ain't there to keep everyone tapped down. But what do we see in the next scene? Where, 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 where in continuity in continuity does this take place? This can oh, well, I'll take it. I'll take that because Ken just got his eyes up. So. This takes place about five years after Return of the Jedi. Ah, so okay. So about, you know, a million years before Episode 7, I guess. And five years after Episode 6, in case anyone's asking. Mm. Actually, I think, what, it's like 45 years before Episode 7, I guess. I don't I don't know. It's some long time after. Uh, okay. Anyway, anyway. So, the, you know, and, and, I, and I'm going to say this. This show is, is dipping a little here, but I feel like this expository piece in the middle was a little bit of a weaker part of the show anyway. So I'm going to get through it a little bit. I'm not going to go okay. into so much. So basically, we got some dirty-ass stormtroopers and Werner Horza. Werner Horza, did you guys recognize his voice? Did you recognize the voice of this, like, Imperial moth, like this ex-Imperial guy here? No. Oh, he's the guy, yeah. that, he's the guy that did Grizzly Man. He's, he's known for having this sort of, like... Like, uh, his voice in, and composed with, uh, like, uh, existential dread. It's like, ah. the bear comes home. Another struggle in a never-ending battle for survival. Like, that's the way it sounds. So, hearing him here was, again, <laughs> really neat. He's weird. It's stunt casting, but they don't acknowledge it, right? You have to know who it is. They don't make it obvious. He's not doing a bit, right? Right, So, that's right. the way I like that being done. So, pretty excellent. We immediately get a Mexican standoff and a doctor named Dr. Pershing or whatever comes in and says, I want you to get this 50 year old, whatever. We're not going to tell you what it is. And it could be anything. Cause this is, you know, the galaxy. Uh, cool thing here. We get the first uh, little bit of Beskar steel slid across the table to the, um, to the Mandalorian. Now, Ken, you've already, okay. you've already sort of told us a little bit about Beskar steel and what it does. And here's where we get the mention about the, pur or, well, wait, it's a little bit later. We get the mention about the purge. Um, right. We we have a situation here where the Empire has done some dirty business. It seems. Uh, I I I it seems to me like this is, you know, they have absolutely been, you know, uh, used used by the Empire for this particular mineral, and it seems it's like more valuable than gold. It's treated as what's that? What's he say? It's real, right? Uh, pretty pretty mm -hmm. crazy. Um, and then there's a whole. Con it's almost religious. To them. Yes. Yeah. The best scar steel of the Mandalorians. And we find out you can get this thing alive, but you know, if you have to kill it, whatever, just bring us proof you killed it. But Dr. Pershing wasn't in on that. Um so we have the moth, yes, kill it. The doctor, no. Um 
You get a tracking fob, the last four digits of its chain code, and the known location, and it's 50 years of age, right? So we get this neat scene here um, where the Mandalorian goes and gets a shoulder pad kind of made out of the Beskar steel. Yeah. yeah Sam, yeah, what, yeah. What did, what, tell us a little bit about what you thought about this scene. Well, first thing that struck me, I was like, okay, this, so there's f- female Mandalorians, <clears throat> you know, because she had, like, you know, a little skirt going on and everything, mm-hmm. um, and she had a pretty cool mask. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, um, it, it, like I said, I'm not deep, you know, steep in, like, you know, um, the Mandalorian lore and everything, but um, I, it was just cool to see, like, a second one there like that. I don't think we've ever seen more than, um, more, more than one and two, in, more than... More than two in one scene, right? Have we? I, I, as far as I know, the only ones we've really seen are, you know, unless you count the millions of clones, of course, of Django Fett, who then attacked. Yes, you're right. We've only really seen Boba Fett. Now, Cam, what, what is, can you tell us a little bit about some of what's going on in this scene as far as uh, the, the ceremony? And is there, like, what's, can you give us a little bit of background on the, uh, on the situation here? Uh, bet. Well, so we saw a little bit of a flashback of where the Mandalorian came to the village, and I guess we're going to see a little bit about, about that. But, but I think where the the per- who he was talking to was that was creating the the armor piece for him specifically, but maybe a family member, definitely someone from a that he was, you know, familiar yeah. with. Um, but definitely the, the steel having that, that steel bring him, bringing him back to his, his origin, like where he came okay. from. So they're very, they're very tribe oriented mm-hmm. and almost nomadic. Uh, so this, and, and because they, they didn't have this, this piece, this steel was taken from them. They kind of lost that. So the bringing it back they're sort of a they're getting their their identities back mm-hmm. answer, answer me this question is there a significance to the mask i mean is there a reason why um i mean we we got more than you know one now and so we see like the um you know the female with a similar mask is what is what is the purpose what is the reason why you know they both actually you know just have their mask on like that or their their helmets well, like i think that? i think to hide their identity Right there's a whole bounty hunter code. Uh, there's a there's a guild. Mm-hmm. There's guild uh, requirements, and so you, the robot um, spouts a whole bunch of guild protocol and this okay. uh, statement and this and that. And I think to the identity of these sort of humanoid bounty hunters, I think it's important that they're covered. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, but also. The, the Mandalorian, like the knights, you know, the, the 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 knights of the round table, you know, from our mythology, right? So it's kind of the same thing. And they all have similar, like, you know, shapes and same. forms as far as, the um you know, the mask, the way it's formed. Because, you know, the first thing you notice that the, the, the helmet is sort of formed the same yeah. way. It's not a similar, it's not like, you know, identical, but it's similar in fashion. You know what's really cool about it's customized to the, the yeah. What's really what's yeah, really cool exactly. about those helmets, and this is something that in the in some of the Boba Fett uh, EU stuff I've read, uh, what they do is is like you can see front and back in the helmet, so like you get one field of view where the backs over here and the fronts in the middle, so that's right. one of the reasons that they always keep it on, um, pretty nifty. In fact, later on we're gonna see the Mandalorian hold up his viewfinder, and where's he hold it? Where's he hold it, Sam? Do you think does he hold it up here where his eye is, or does he hold it right? <laughs> In the middle. Right in the right center. center. Right in the center. Super nifty. So I know because he did that that I'm not just lying. Which is pretty rare for me to know that I'm not lying. Uh, so I'll take it. So I'll take it. So let's talk a little bit. So so I want to talk a little bit about the parallels between a Western and this show now here. Because this is okay. this scene specifically is, I, is where I think it really takes off. Um, it's for me, I mean, the, the, obviously, you know, you could pull the opening scene out of Deadwood or, um, Tombstone or whatever, but this, this piece mm-hmm. here, it seems to me like we're, we're to equate the Mandalorians with the native Americans in most of the traditional Western stories. Um, okay. it seems to me like there's a sort of, uh, there's something about being a Mandalorian that everyone knows is special. Um, 
the opening scene they call it Mando, which can't be his name. I mean, it would be awesome if it was, but I, I can't imagine that it is. And we also have uh, this guide here in this next piece, right? The guide piece where we have to, the Mandalorian has to learn how to ride a blurg. <laughs> well, he has to learn how to ride a blurg. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Pretty awesome. But this is... That's a challenge. Yeah, so so it's like a corral. There's actually a little literal corral here. And, you know, this is also where the mu- the music, that bum, 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 that piece, it's like a horse riding sort of picks up, right? Uh, mm-hmm. and, and the score is really excellent as in, as in most star Wars. Um, but I like ah, that, what that music really cements it for me. So what, yeah, that's, um, Lou with Lou big bond Gorson or something like that. He yeah. did the, um, he did the soundtrack of uh, black Panther. You know, he was like the score, you know, for that. And <clears throat> he does some hip hop stuff, mm-hmm. you know, for, um, Childish Gambino and everything. So yeah, he's very diverse in his, um, you know, musical, you know, um, scoring there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we've got the blurgs. The guide says, I have spoken. And he wants peace to return to his world. Oh yeah. I, I love that. You know, his, I have spoken. I mean, that's his definitive. I have spoken. <laughs> he says that a couple times. You can't imagine this guy being anything, you know, you know, you, you can't imagine him being anything more than a one-off, but again, this a uh, very deep world full of a lot of cool stuff. I'm in that every time I um, talk to my kids, so they won't say anything else after that. They'll just be totally confused. I have spoken. spoken. (laughs) A guide won't take money, but he will take one blurg. So he will take the blurg. Got to give him that. And then we have this action scene, which is tremendous. Yeah, that's that's probably the best thing about the um, the episode so far. You know, (laughs) it was pretty deep, pretty decent. You can see, <laughs> and, and I love, you know, in the Western angle on this is so, uh, Ken, could you hear Spurs when IG-80 whatever is coming, <laughs> is coming up to, to the encampment? Oh. When he walks into the square? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Ching, ching, ching. So the sure. upshot of this, it's a, it's, a, it's a shootout, and it's awesome, and I won't even try to describe it blow for blow. It is awesome. Um, you know, while in the midst of this, the Mandalorian goes against his best judgment, makes a deal with the IG-88 droid, uh, and then we have Chekhov's Gatling gun that shows up. And, uh, again, I could see, like, Christian Bale doing this in 310 to Yuma, you know what I mean? Jumping up on the Gatling gun. <laughs> taking care of everyone. Uh, uh, what, uh, my, I love the droid. I love the way they've been doing droids with the newer Star Wars movies. Uh, this, yeah. this, this droid yeah. is hilarious. The, you can... Yeah, super hilarious. You know, when we would, when I would watch the original Star Wars movies, I would always think to myself, like, you know, what's so bad about droids? Like, they'd be like, ah, droids. I don't. We won't serve their kind here. And I'd be like, what's the big deal? I kind of get it now after <laughs> after watching just this scene, right? You kind of Ken, do you get an idea that maybe some of the uh, the anti droid behavior we've seen is maybe a little bit founded here? Well, with the IG, with yeah, the bounty yeah. hunter droid, the bounty hunter IG droid. Oh well, I I I agree with what you said. I mean, they're trying to make their personalities a little more <clears throat> personable, mm-hmm. uh, a little more human. Give them a sense of humor, uh, and this would definitely had a sense of humor, like for yeah. real. What'd you make of trying to sell? What'd you make of that self destruction, Sam? Like, what did you make of that running gag on the self destruction? Oh yeah, it was it was it was hilarious and everything. Like, no, don't self destruct yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was straight <clears throat> good old George Lucas right there. I mean, right, that's yeah. the kind of stuff that he liked to put in for his characters to kind of banter with. So you you know you, know, you, you got involved with them, thought they were yep. funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way they did they um oh. you know bounce off of each other and everything during the fight. The way they both know, look at um, the uh, the, actually, the Gatling gun man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, afterwards, it's actually brought out the personality of the Mandalorian a lot, lot more during this sequence mm-hmm. and everything. So you get to see a little bit more of his personality interacting with, you know, um, you know, the droid. Yeah, you get to see again. You know, why he doesn't like the droid. He even says, "Ah, oh, you're not so bad," right? He says, "You're not so bad." <laughs> and then uh, we find that that the droid has been sent on a little bit of a different mission, uh, a termination mission, and the fifty year old. Uh, thing of a 50 old person i don't know a sentient being i don't want to be pejorative but you know i'm not being anti-alien here uh i'm not <laughs> i'm not with the real empire uh it's a baby yoda 
Now, a baby Yoda didn't expect that. Yoda. You know, now, Ken, do you, do you know you know why mm. this is such a big deal, right? Like you know that they've the the yeah you, so yeah the little the the character whatever it is yeah I'm not know I don't know what they're wanting us to <clears throat> surmise here, but I was definitely thinking maybe maybe not Yoda, yeah. but obviously uh similar species yeah i i think what what's the big deal here is they've never ever said anything about yoda species ever 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 never 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 they have never ever ever said anything about yoda species it's been hidden and silent <laughs> never, never ever ever and that's such a big deal so it seems like they're about to introduce this information i, I mean i can't imagine with this sort of you know, a scientist being involved, this doctor being involved, that we're not going to get some exp expository information about what exactly species Yoda is. You know, uh, obviously, you know, you don't start training Jedi when you're a child. And he trained Jedi mm. for 500 years or 800 years or whatever. So I I'm excited to see where they're going with this. Uh, yes, this is a, um, definitely a great way to end off the episode and leave you wanting more and everything. You know, what's going on and um, he killed the, um, you know, the droid and everything or destroyed the droid, I should say, not, uh, um, before the droid was able to kill the um, the Yoda yeah. baby. Um, Which, again, but yeah, we're in, favor. Was nice we're in favor of that. We're glad. About yeah, we that. are definitely in favor of although, babies here. You although, know. you know, between Watchmen and this show, I think I'm going to get my my money's worth on baby dread. I'm just, <laughs> that's oh, enough man. of that. That's hilarious. <laughs> I just want to see yeah. oh. some, I just want babies to be asleep in their cribs, safe, far away from danger. And this has been, it's just hard. You know, it's rough. <laughs> uh, so like this. Yeah, these babies had it rough, some of these, um, you know, TV shows and stuff, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, the, the episode kind of ends there. You know, we know it's not the end of the, the story. We know it's the beginning of the story. We get that, uh, that reaching up. The little baby Yoda reaches up with its hand, and the Mandalorian reaches down. Um, I'm excited to see this. So, so why? So, so okay. So the droid wanted to, um, you know, murder the baby or um, take out the baby and everything. So, what are we supposed to gather from the Mandalorian destroying the droid and not, you know, taking it that far? Like, what are what are we what are we taking from that? Well, for me, I definitely think that there's definitely more than one contract out, which means. That there's, you know, there's a schism amongst these people whether or not to, to, it's worth it, like whether or not it's possible that you should kill this thing, right? Or whether or not it's right that you should kill this thing. Huh. So obviously, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like there's more than one interested party, which means the Imperial people, and they're, we know that they're not the ones that, uh, that put the bounty on, on its head, right? Because they would have just put a the real bounty on, you know, they would have sent two bounty hunters, but said right. just, just destroy. So that there is an right. after. Not aforenamed party involved. Is that what do you think, Ken? Uh, I agree. I agree with that. Um, I also think that the since the Mandalorian actually was given a mm. choice, you know, cold or hot, yeah, warm. You know, either way, bring it back. Um, he chose warm, but also because it's a a baby. Um, I'm. We're all assuming it's a baby. We think it was it's acting a baby. like yeah, a baby. Yeah. Thing could, like, but <clears throat> he had a difficult childhood himself. Mm -hmm. So I think he identifies and he realizes that he needs to uh, ah, maybe. Uh, right, this is a foundling. Right, right. Hints, hints, yeah. hints with the flashbacks yeah, found, that we see maybe through like the episode. Right. So you think he's in some okay. danger because he's going to have to burn his guild bridges and sort of take care of this. Uh, you know this baby Yoda. I hope we get a name. I hope they name this thing in the next episode to make that a little easier on. I'd like the baby to be named. Yeah, I mean, it, it it was a good way to connect. Okay, his um, you know, the flashbacks and everything to his um, making sure the baby is saved. You know, at the end of the episode, so it's it's something there. It's definitely something mm -hmm. there. Absolutely. So that that's it. That's the episode. That's the whole All right. thing. That was a um, very, um, like I said, I'm not, you know, deep in the lore and everything. So this whole Mandalorian thing and their history is just brand new to me. You know, I'm so used to Luke Skywalker and his, <laughs> you know, his, his story and everything. Um, but it was very, very 
refreshing to see something other than um, the Luke mm -hmm. story. Something outside of what, what they call like the outer realm or outer realms yeah. or whatever, you know, of the universe and everything. Seeing things like, you know, um, in there that you can, you know, see like the um, the stormtroopers, uh, the course of droids and everything. Um, but just seeing um, the universe expand in this manner was a, you know, very refreshing thing to see. Super, super awesome. Super awesome. And how about this? Yeah, go ahead, Ken. Sorry. And the stormtroopers were a little beat up, too. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Stormtroopers. Dirty. Yeah. Not just beat up, just yeah. unwashed. <laughs> which, you know, that's a weird state to be in if you're a military huh. guy. They were definitely unwashed, like... unclean. Yeah. How big a cog do you think They're that. Just uh, tired muscle. How big a cog do you think that uh, Werner Herzog is here? Do you think that he's like uh, a moth? Do you think he's just some sort of local local governor? Like, where where do you think he ranks in the hierarchy, Ken? Um, I think he. I think you you nailed it. I think he was a uh, um, a, a moth, okay. moth a disenfranchised moth that was uh, sort of just now his. Like I said, the, the empire is not in charge anymore, and everyone's kind of have you know a gun and you've got some credits and you can build a little army. You got yourself a little uh, a little you got kingdom. Yourself a to stew run. going. That's for so. sure. I love seeing yeah. Carl Weathers. You know. Uh, Ever absolutely. since Arrested Development, I love seeing Carl Weathers and everything. Because uh, I, I just think to myself, well, you get yourself some meat, you get yourself some broccoli, you got yourself a stew going. I just think about that all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. That's like one of my favorite lines from that show. I need to get some new favorite lines is really what it comes down to. So so that's what we got for you the first week. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that everything's going to get fleshed out a lot more in the coming weeks. And, uh, you know, we're all... Yeah, can't wait, can't, can't, can't wait to see more. Looking forward to the fact of, um, you know, um, this this whole um, just universe just expanding and open up and everything. So um, just seeing something other than what we're used to seeing. And I'm, I'm wondering if, if at any point will any of this time to, like, you know, future movies or, you know, I know it's taken place before um, before a lot of the recent stuff that we've seen. So, you know, it's just telling a different aspect way back in the past mm -hmm. and everything you know so um yeah it's, it's it was i guess keep saying before it's very refreshing to see this this well, aspect of the star well, Wars. you remember War. how they tried to make because i remember we were um for those of you that haven't uh listened to our other podcasts and that's uh do that uh ken has joined <laughs> us before uh for our star wars stuff uh specifically it was on our episode 8 podcast and I definitely remember thinking to myself, they, they tried to make Han Solo's dice a thing at the very end here, right? Uh, certainly, I think, Sam, what I'm saying here is that I think that they're definitely going somewhere uh, with the movies later. Oh, uh, yeah. It wouldn't sort of shock me if all of a sudden a Mandalorian in full Beskar armor shows up in Episode Nine, right? It would make total sense. That would be awesome to see. I mean, I'm like, I'm all for for that. <laughs> I love some crossover stuff. Uh, you know, may, let, let the connect connections fly as much as absolutely. possible. That's what I'm all here yeah, for. Absolutely. All right. Well, before we go, Ken, do you have any, like, final thoughts you'd like to share about the episode? Uh, just that I, I share your enthusiasm. And I'm looking forward to the second episode, which I guess is going to drop Tuesday. Yeah, pretty soon. Yeah. Didn't really say. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, I like that they're... Yeah, I like that they're weekly instead of the binge because it gives us a chance to digest things. And yeah, and actually, I would say I don't know if you can see this it's on the camera. I was looking through some of my stuff. This, do you see yeah. this? Yeah, this is um, a proof of bounty <laughs> uh, that was used in in uh, the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, so. I've had this for years, but the first time I've seen it in film. That's awesome. What? That's awesome, really? man. Wow. That is decent. So, yeah. Several times, uh, the Mandalorian shit says, has this. if you don't have this, you cannot shoot, kill, or beat up anyone and take them for money. You oh, got this. a bounty hunter license. You got this. Yeah. That's what this is. So I have yes, next week. I'll be using that uh, <laughs> that Ken ISO camera a lot more. Sam, uh, <laughs> Sam, what are what are your final thoughts and where can they find us? Um, a hey, great episode. Looking forward to the next one. Um, make sure that you're you know catching us everywhere. Uh, you know, podcasts are found Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, um, Google Play. Uh, tune in anywhere. Uh, make sure you are following us all over social media at Neuropsychopedia. 
and leaving us some feedback at nurse nerds at nursecyclopedia.com. Just drop it in the comments for the video. I promise we'll get it. And I'm gonna go last because uh, I like to do that. Uh, so for me, you know, go. you can catch out my uh, gaming stream on SC Hitch over at Twitch. You can catch me on Twitter at Steel City Hitch. You'll notice a, a pattern there. And you know, it just started this week. You know, I'm gonna be doing some recapping of Rick and Morty myself uh, as part of my solo effort, which again indicates nothing about the partnership uh, that we're willing to admit publicly. Woo. Nah, just kidding. Oh it's man, not, not, not yet. Cool. Not yet. Uh, not it's called yet. Nobody Cares. No what scott thinks uh so check that out there's an episode down below nobody cares nobody people. does care not even me and uh that's it so uh you know without further ado we really appreciate everyone for watching for sending your feedback listening uh and we'll hope to see you next episode see you later see you next week Nerdcyclopedia.